What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to take a look at the Bandai Robot Spirits Metal Robot Wing Gundam Zero. So, this was sent to me by Dr. Diecast, of course. He always sends me cool stuff like this. Uh, this is actually pretty unique because it actually transforms. It's one of the few Gundams that actually transform. So, we have that to look forward to. You saw that in the images up front. And, uh, and it's actually a pretty cool robot. Now, this is a premium line from Bandai. So, it's not like the Gundam Universe figures I've been looking at. And actually, let's bring one in just for comparison. So, here is the Gundam Universe now, just on the surface, without knowing anything, it is actually bigger. It's about seven inches. This is about six and a half. So it looks kind of smaller and lesser, but there's a lot more going on with this guy than with this guy. Now, this isn't the exact same robot. They are both from Wing Gundam, the show, but they're, they're different robots from that show. So slight differences here in the look. But uh, you do get a sense of kind of the, the quality, and, and I've done a review on this, you can go watch that, but there's a lot more going on with this guy here. So let's take a look at him. Um, you get a lot of paint and detail. So pretty much everything you see, there is paint detail on the blue, the silver, the gold, the red accents here. The white is, I believe, is paint. I'm not 100% sure. I saw a warning in the manual that said, be careful with this painted surface because it can scratch. So I assume that means it's painted. But there's a lot of painted detail, a lot of little tampo details on the shoulders, on the back, on the sides. I mean, there's really a lot going on. So it does come fully assembled. It isn't a model kit like some of the other Gundams we get. This is similar to the... Gundam Universe, but obviously made of die cast. If you take off this back panel here, and that tends to pop off easily, so it might pop off during the review, but you can see all the die cast in there. So the inner frame is fully die cast all throughout, and then the outer part is plastic. It's a nice quality plastic, but it is plastic. Let's go over his articulation. There is quite a bit of articulation and features. As we go through this, I will also point out the little features that are included. Uh, for the head, beautifully painted, metallic green eyes, red, black, painted horns. These horns are a little bit thin, so you don't want to be careful. There is green in the crest, and there's also green back here on the back of the head. The head on its, itself is on a ball joint, so it goes up to there, down to there, rotates all the way around. And then the neck is also on a ball joint, so you can get it way down and up based on how you move the neck. And you get a little bit of side to side out of that too. There is a hidden feature right here, so if you push down here on the shoulder pad, that will reveal these Gatling guns, or whatever they are, on his shoulders. Really cool looking guns. Continuing to the shoulders, you have this shoulder pad that actually goes up and down on its own. It actually will kind of extend out too, but that's for transformation. And you can bring the shoulder up on its own. So that has a separate joint. So underneath here you can see there's a ball joint and then a separate joint for the arm. It also gives you this in and out movement. So there's a butterfly, but then there's a separate butterfly for the entire shoulder. You can see this blue piece moves in and out. So that's really cool. So you can get his arms way across his chest. Rotation at the bicep. Double jointed elbow gets you the full bend there. The wrists are on ball joints. So you get all the way around and it rotates up and down, left and right. There are hidden features inside here, so if you pull down on this little piece here, there is a rocket booster in here, and you can aim that and articulate that however you like. That's pretty cool. Uh, this came off again. There are some little hidden panels here, so you can fold these down and expose his little vents there. They're painted in that copper color. That looks really cool. It's really nicely detailed and sculpted. Close those up. You do get a waist swivel here, so it rotates all the way around. I do find this panel pops off easily as I'm rotating, so I'm just gonna set it aside for now. But it does rotate all the way around freely. It doesn't really have an ab crunch, which was kind of surprising. It has a little bit, but not really. It does go side to side, as expecting an ab crunch there, but there isn't much of anything there. So, a little bit limited on the ab crunch, but... Hip skirts, these are on just a hinge. 
these outer ones are on a double ball peg, so it's attached to a ball peg, and that ball peg's attached to another ball peg. Get those up and out of the way. You can see the hip joint is actually on a drop down piece, so that inner piece goes back and forth, that's die cast, and then there's a ball joint. So you can rotate on the ball joint separately, or you can rotate on that hinge and get it up to there. Let's see, I think you can get it higher than that. Just be careful with uh, the paint on the inside there, but you can get it up on both of those joints. It does go back. Now I removed this back plate here. Back plate does tend to come off as you're manipulating, so I'm just going to take it off, but just want to show you this does have a little bit of articulation on its own, but the leg is limited by that. Out to the side on that ball, same ball joint, goes up to there. It's a very tight joint, so it gets up to there. Continuing down, we have a double jointed knee. There's a transformation joint right there, but you can get this fully bent all the way. That looks really nice. There is an opening panel here, but it is for the transformation, so it's not really a feature, but we'll go over the transformation a little bit later. I just wanted to show you there is a panel there. And then these guards do go up and down, and then on the back they do go up and down. For ankles, you have a tilt this way, tilt that way, forward, backwards, so pretty much every direction, and then a rotation. So that's a full ball joint, and you get some nice movement on the toe as well. So coming to the back, you do have these wings here. These rotate in and out on this joint. You can remove these. They have boosters right here that are articulated, but if you wanted to take off the whole backpack, and just be careful with these horns, but you can take it off. That's what it looks like, and you can actually see there's the butterfly joint built in. But that's what it looks like without the backpack. Now, it wouldn't be wing Gundam without it, so you kind of need it. But if you want to display it without, you can. It does peg in nicely into his back, just like that. You do get uh, articulation on these, so these go up and down and in and out. And then you can actually open these up and display it like that. These have boosters here, and those are also articulated. Or you can get the wings out to the side. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with these wings. They, they can really just pose in any direction. They're very, very poseable. As far as accessories, you do get quite a bit with this guy. So first off, you do get swap out hands. So they are on ball joints, you just pop them off. And you get a whole bunch of hands here. So I'll just go over each pair. So you get the gripping, gun gripping finger with the trigger finger there, two of those. You get the open expressive hands like these. Those look nice. You get the closed gripping hand without the trigger finger. So I'm going to put on the trigger finger hand so I can show you some other features. But you just want to put it on straight. And that allows us to take a look at these. So you get two of these guns. Very nice paint. It's fully painted. The gray, that copper, and then the accents here, the gunmetal, and then you got some tampos on there. So for these guns you can fold down this handle and then you can push down on this. So this actually lifts up and down. So push the head all the way down and then that locks it in. That locks the handle down. Alright, so you have that and that can fit in his hand right here. Nice tight fit. Everything is good tolerances and fitment on these things. Now you can also take these two guns and combine them into a super gun. So basically take this, fold out this little tab right here on the front and the back. Then take this one, same thing, fold out that tab, the front and back. Then you're going to take these, obviously they're going to peg together. Like that. And then you can have him holding this, or you could have him double wielding it. Because he has the the butterfly joints, you could have him holding it with both hands. Whoops. And you could have him pose like that. But either way, you get this option. And that's pretty cool, because he could be blasting like that. So here's the hilt. 
just a little thing and you can take the beam and he hits beam saber and then you can take this and put it in his hand it's actually very small and thin so you just want to be careful with that but nice looking beam saber now of course you can store it so if you open up this piece of armor right here there's the beam handle I put it in there ahead of time because it's actually kind of hard to get it in there but you can store both beam handles in there and then the um, the actual light piece has to go somewhere else but there it is in there that looks nice last accessory here is his shield so it looks like this it does have a transforming gimmick in it so I'll show you that a little bit later but you want to get this peg into the side of his arm it will go into either side so go ahead and take this get that pegged in and now he's got his shield you can't extend this part right here these are very 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 sharp so I don't know if those will break easily, so just be careful with those. But everything on this is sharp. That's sharp, this is sharp. I guess it's not a kid's toy, so they don't need to worry about it being sharp. But there you go. There he is with his shield and his beam saber. And one final accessory, which is necessary for flying figures like this, is a flight stand. You do just assemble it together. You take these two pieces, stick them into the base here. It does say... Wing Gundam Zero XXG. It's a nice glossy with a glossy red. I already have some fingerprints on there. I'll have to wipe those off. But if you open up this here, it doesn't actually peg. It just kind of sits on here. But this will allow you to go up and down. You can lock that. There's a lock for this. So if you open this lock, you can rotate this and then get that locked in position. And then this can go up and down like this. And if it's too short, you can actually flip it around get it the other way whoops and lock that back in so however you want to do it um, pretty good stand I, I haven't really gotten any stands other than the Tamashi stage act for my my Gundams so these these work just fine and that little peg there is gonna go right here actually into an adapter so here's the adapter so just get that plugged in here and then that adapter is going to plug into his butt right here. So go ahead and take that. You can see there's two slots there. All right, there it is on the flight stand. Looks really good. Got some opposability, adjustability. Now, it doesn't feel all that secure on here. Uh, I guess if you push it in nice, nicely, it will sit. But it's just two pegs. And for an expensive piece, I'd want it to lock in a little bit better. But good enough. Nice stand. Better than the Tamashi Stage Act anyway. But there you go for the flight stand. All right, now let's get this guy transformed into his flight mode. And it's a, obviously a pretty simple transformation. Let's go ahead and take the shield here, collapse this down, and come to the inside. The book says these are delicate, so that doesn't give me a warm fuzzy. But you want to fold these little tabs out. This side as well. And it should look like that. Then you take these guns. And the guns have a little slot right here that this is going to slide into. And you know which side is which because you've got these tabs on the inside. So get that on here. Give it a little support. I mean, I don't know. It, it feels okay, but just because they said it was delicate, I'm trying to be careful. So give it a little support and then slide this down onto it. Right, and that part's ready. Now you could actually use this like this in robot mode so this is going to end up going here like that so you could display him like this if you wanted to but it's a little awkward to have him like that but I'm going to take that off for now just because we have some other things to do before we attach that all right so go ahead and rotate the waist 180 degrees we're going to rotate the head back 180 degrees so it's facing backwards. We're going to come down to the legs. And this is the part that, um, just be careful. Get things out of the way so you're not colliding. You're going to open up the knee. Fold down this panel. And then you're going to collapse the knee all the way. So basically take this and bring it all the way up. And that's going to sit like that. So you know it goes back because it actually clicks into place. But that's how it's supposed to look for the flight mode. Okay. Next we're going to take the foot and we're going to open up this panel here on the back. 
Take this foot, rotate it around. Rotate the foot, the toe, into the leg. Open up this tiny little panel, which will reveal a little booster. Bring this back down. Bring this back down. And that's just going to sit. And that's the back. That's the actual booster for the jet. All right, same on this one. Open this up. This actually has a drop-down joint, so rotate this around, fold this up into the leg, rotate this panel down, fold this down, fold this, and cover that up, and that's the back. All right, so you can kind of straighten those out, straighten out these hip skirts. Those should all sit, and this is constantly coming out. We'll talk about that at the end. All right, go ahead, and now we can take these and open these up. And those are going to actually just sit like this. You can put that in the middle. Actually, that's probably how it goes with the booster in the middle like that. So same thing on this side, open this up and then fold this around. Bring the booster to the middle. And that is on a ball joint, so that ball joint actually rotates. And then have it set up like that. And it should be kind of pointing straight back. Right? And be careful with the horns and all the little things sticking out, but you want them all kind of folded. Take the arms, fold those, yeah, this thing. I'll put that on later. Take these shoulder pads, those are going to rotate down. And basically the arms are going to sit at his sides. So same on the side, rotate this down. So it should look something like this. Then we're going to take the, and we'll put this back. All right, then we're going to take this backpack piece and put that on, and that's going to be kind of the last finishing touch. Go ahead and take this. There's two tabs here going to fit into the backpack. So get those tabbed in. Make sure they're lined up. Push them all the way in. All right, so it should look something like that. All right, and there you have Wing Gundam all transformed into his flight mode. It looks really cool. You got this nice long jets with the guns in front. On the back, you've got the boosters here, 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 and here. So you got four of them total. I mean, it still looks like a guy lying down, but still, it's it's pretty impressive. Now, of course, you can use the flight stand with this. You're going to take this piece right here. This tab right here is going to fit into the bottom, into his bum, and then this is going to fit around his chest. So get this around and in, and this around his chest. Make sure you get into the second hole, it should fit like that. Then you take this, and take your stand from before, take this adapter off, and this is going to fit onto here. And there you go, there is your flight mode. We will angle him down a little bit. But yeah, it looks really good. I like how this came out. Here, I'll just lower this. Really nice detail in this jet mode. Now, obviously, it's you know, it's not a real transformer, right? It's not a transformer. It's actually from the Gundam line. But pretty cool that it does transform into something. Very rare that we get a transforming gimmick in this line. So I really do like it. But there you go for jet mode. Final thoughts on the Bandai Metal Robot Spirits Wing Gundam. Let's start with the positives. I think it looks really good. All of the paint detail, the sculpt work, the tampos, the accessories, everything looks beautiful on this thing. They just did a knockout job on that. And Bandai knows how to do that, but this is a, you know kind of a premium figure, so this is no exception. It really, really does look good. All the accessories work well. They all integrate well in both modes. Um, I didn't I didn't put the guns back on here, but you could technically have the guns here on the shield and use it that way. So there's really a lot of flexibility and, you know, playability with this figure. Negatives-wise, uh, there's only a couple minor things. So there's a lot of sharp corners uh, on the shield, on the uh, figure itself. Uh, and, I've, and if you're not careful, you could actually, you know, break or bend some of those things like the horns. All that stuff you got to watch out for. And then this panel right here tends to pop off as you're manipulating the figure because it's just on a ball joint. And you, if you don't push right in the center where the ball is, it just pops right off. 
It's easy to put back. It's not a big deal, but it's just a little bit of irritation as you're messing with it. Uh, but definitely a, a fun figure. If you're a collector of Gundam or you just like cool transforming robots, definitely recommend this because it's, it's just a very neat thing, especially since it transforms. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Dr. Diecast for sending this to me, and we'll see you next time.